So this is Paul, and I'm going to read or use these words as my own. Where of I, Thomas Shuta, I made a minister. And that's what I dealt with the ministers as well. You are a minister not because you can preach or you can sing or you think you can do it. This is the purpose of ministry. I made a ministry according to the dispensation of God, not according to my own, not because I was long in church, I must minister. According to the what? Dispensation of God. We need to understand all ministers, Galen, are because of the dispensation of God. So here now, I taught you one thing about whenever you see a verse, the deciding factor is God in his heart towards whatever is being said. And the enemy came for me, but God. When you see God, you must now understand what is God saying in this and not my own desires or interpretation. Does it make sense? It says, I made according to the dispensation of God, not according to my desire to preach, to be seen, to be a leader, but according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you. So the gift then, there's many people, they think the gift is for them, Mom Sarah, and they push themselves and they elevate themselves and they don't know the gift is for the people. From God, to me, for you. So if you don't pray for me, then what I give you will be poison. That's why I say pray for me. Don't pray for a car house or those things. Pray that I stay sane. When the challenges come, you know how many challenges ministers face that we cannot share with people. Jesus, he spoke parables. When he saw the 5,000 parables, but when he came to his own, he said, this is who I am. Don't tell anybody why. They are more mature than the crowd. To fulfill what? The word of God. To fulfill. That's why Jesus prayed and he said, Father, everyone you've given me, I've not lost one. It means every minister, and this is what I said to them, you don't just minister because you've got an opportunity. You must know that you'll give an account according to the word you spoke. And once you understand that, you'll run from the pulpit instead of running to it. You'll run from the pulpit and run to the lost. There are unoccupied pulpits in the streets and the drug houses because everybody wants to preach to the preached. Even the mystery. What is a mystery? A mystery is something that you know exists, but you don't know what it is. So we call it what? Revelation. I made a minister, Brother Greg, by God's grace and dispensation to me for people. To open up mysteries which has been hidden from ages and generations. Remember I said to you, everything spiritual is generational. There's nothing, Pastor Brian, that you can do now that you don't repent from that will not fall on carers. So carers can accept the Lord at the age of 16 if there's stuff that you're willingly doing. That you think no one sees. The spiritual realm sees it. The demons and the angels as well. And the demons come for, for that which belongs to them. And not just for you. Your, your coffin can go down and we think it's the end of a generational curse. No. In the spiritual realm, that thing still speaks. So whenever you get revelation in the house, whoever is, pre is, 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 is preaching, whoever is, listen to me. It's for generational refinement. It is not to puff us up. Foolishness on Facebook. No, our church. Hey, Muna, hey, ekati data ha kopa miyuta. There's a guy that takes me in nonsense. And I was so tempted, Brother Graham, to just go and put it right. But God, the Holy Spirit said, this one is polishing his ego. And he wants to bring you into a platform of foolishness. I just said, he's rech, bro. <laughs> I was doot verkeerd. There isn't a word like that, but that is how wrong he was. This guy was so wrong. He could even have said, Eve's surname was Williams. That's how wrong he was. And I just said, you are right. I didn't have energy because he was not there to learn. He was in the flesh using verses. Okay, let me get, let me get somewhere. But it's now, it, is, it was hidden from ages. And what I said to the ministers was, guys like Elijah that can stop rain. The anointing of Elijah was so strong, guys. <laughs> That guy controlled everything around him. So they made fun of him, say, yeah, bless God, bless God, ball that, ball that, and punch land. And he said, oh, oh, you're playing with me. 
He called a bear to kill them. And this Elijah, some revelation was hidden from him. Ezekiel, in chapter 1, I always tell you, go and read it. Just like this, he was translated into the third heaven and God gave him a revelation of the throne room of God. So strong that he struggled to walk for days. He was sick. Hidden from him. How can God show you heaven and still hide some revelation from you? How can God, in, in, in Isaiah 6, brother given, angels that walk around the throne crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Still he keeps it from them. That's why the Bible says when I dealt with this, it says there are some revelation that angels wish to look into, but they're not permitted to. How deep and valuable is this thing, Sister Betty? But it's, check this. This is how valuable you are. God keeps it from all these men and women that went before. And he says, I'm going to make it manifest now in this age. Why do you think you're getting attacked the way that you are? Because once you come to the knowledge of these things, you'll be unstoppable. That's why when you seek the face of, even on a Wednesday when you're tired, rather come and yawn here than sleep at home. There's stuff that God wants to open to you, Chantal, to you, not just to the church, to you that can only be found in His presence. It's now made manifest to whom? His saints, not to everybody. His saints. What, what does this mean? People that have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus, not to His pastors, His bishops, His apostles, to His saints. If you have a six year old son that has given his heart to the Lord and the Holy Spirit at His level is speaking to him, he will get the mystery. That's why I said, seek God for yourself. Seek Him, search Him, search the scriptures. I'm not the source of revelation. I'm a vessel through which it flows. But God wants to speak to you. The sad thing is, if you've not given your heart to understand, then we can all be in the same building, hear the same thing audibly. Not everybody catch it with a spirit. It's on song. Even the mystery which has been hidden. Next verse. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. We, we've dealt with this among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christ now in you is the qualification of you getting this mystery. Now it makes sense. Christ in you is not just for you to go to heaven. If you don't have Christ in you, the mystery will not be made known unto you. Come on, to whom God make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. Christ in you. This is where I want to get to. Whom we preach, ha, ah, now it makes sense. <laughs> Whom we preach, warning every man. That's why when I am sometimes here and I tell you stuff, I'm, this is what it means, warning. What is a warning? There's danger ahead. And that day you drive a lot. There's lots of times you meet those yellow triangles, which now we know in traffic it means hazard or hazardous. There's danger coming, right? Right? Or will a license a up? Okay. It warns you. There's roadworks ahead, there's portals ahead, the road has caved in, whatever it is, it is warning you of. So when I'm warning you, it means there's danger ahead. If you, in spite of the warning, go forward, don't go and plead the blood of Jesus because you are foolish. Stay holy. Now, just an example the Kinwell goes and gets himself a girlfriend where he knows what she wants from him, his body. We warn him, stay holy, right? He continues to go into it. On that other side of the wording, HIV, unwanted pregnancies, STIs, the most dangerous one, the glory lifting, right? You can't go now there and when you're busy with the thing that you're doing, whether it's stealing, whatever it is, you know, then you go there beyond the warning, blood of Jesus on me. You, you just there, the club, uh, plead the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. In teaching every man, teaching, what does teaching mean? Teaching means it brings a discipline to you. Everybody is not your disciple, only the ones that gives into your teaching. The word disciple comes from the word discipline. Discipline means to teach, to form a mindset so that we all think alike. That's why when Peter said, I wasn't with Jesus, he said, yeah, Lichman, you sound like him. Why? His mindset was formed for three years of teaching. 
So don't just run for stuff where you see prophets and stuff. No, get yourself to a place where they teach you. So that you can become a disciple of what? The word of God. Not of Tommy Shuta. The word of God. This is my purpose to you. That we, ministers, I may present every man and woman perfect in Christ. What is perfect? It is matured. Is it like what? Didn't miss no imperfectly so gift. So the purpose of every minister is to teach and bring you to maturity. So perfection there, to present every man perfect in Christ, speaks of what? It speaks of that I present not just people to Christ, but matured people to Christ. Guys, come on. That's why Jesus said, how long should I be with you? He knew that he had to present the twelve to his father. When he went to heaven, it was not just the blood. He had to present the 12 that he was building. That's why he said, how long shall I be with you given? You are not growing up. You're not get- The longer you take to grow, the more frustrated heaven becomes with you. Jesus, son of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. At times he got angry at what? Unwillingness to grow. He said that we may present. So all this teaching, for five years people have been walking with us. You must be at a better place in Tata than when we started this ministry. Because now the problem then is not the feeding that you've been receiving. It is the consumption. It's like having twins born on the same day, seconds apart. You feed one more, you feed the other one. The one or the same food, you feed them the same routine, everything. If they, one refuses to eat, what will happen to them? It does not mean he's not all of a sudden not your child, but he'll be of a lesser quality. So feed. Don't look at what others look. Now you're angry. The enemy is lying to you. He don't want you to feed on the word. Brush it off. Strip us away. Yeah, I, you can't tell me when to forgive. You don't know what I went through. Hey, Muna, it's fine. <laughs> feed on that unforgiveness. Watch who you become. Be exalted now in heavens. So we're going to deal with maturity in this series. Amen. Muni Baizan is going to be very good. And whenever we come to a place where there's a warning that the Holy Spirit brings to your spirit, repent, change course. And remember, heaven will only warn you for so long after the destruction. The grace of God does not mean that you can sin into perpetuity and then you can just say, Father, because you're going to have to present even the life that you love. I send you into earth with a purpose. What did you do, Brian? Yeah, but you know we grew up poor. You know my mother worked when we... It's fine. What did you do? Yeah, but, but you don't understand what we're going through. My father was, 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 was killed when we were young. And so, what did you do, Betty? Tell me, what did you do? Yeah, but you know my father, he had, he, he, he had lots of issues. And then the issues came on me and my mother was sick. What did you do? Your stance with God is not dependent on people, even your parents. It can delay stuff, it can frustrate you. But none of us will go there and say, my mother was an alcoholic, my father was an alcoholic, that's why I didn't do it. It's like, but my grace is sufficient for you. Well, you're not the one quoting it in all these gatherings of you. Why did you not apply the word? My grace is stronger than anything that the enemy could have thrown through you, whether through your father, your mother, your husband, or your anything you faced is not stronger than my name. You said it, you sang it, you preached it, you were dancing to it. Why did you not apply it? If you had known my love for you, you would have stripped yourself of all those nonsense. I warned you time and time again, but you kept on these things. You refused to grow. Where is your fruit? Genesis 1 verse 1. So we're going to learn in the series. Amen? Yeah, I feel, I feel, when I see my verse there, I feel, yeah. <laughs> In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So God created heaven, supernatural system, earth, natural system. Both of these systems, let me shock you, don't respond to immature, immaturity. It responds to maturity, good or evil. Guys, this system, supernatural, this natural, it does not respond to babies. That's why even when you speak, Elijah 
at a younger age spiritually could not say to the rain, you don't rain. He was not a son yet. Guys, come here quickly. This is Elisha, the prophet that came after the son, spiritual son of Elijah. When Elijah found him, he was a young man that was willing but untrained, holy, but untrained, immature. So Elijah walked with him, showing him what it was like to walk in the manner of Christ. Meaning he's teaching him. What does it mean? Maturing him, perfecting him. When Elijah went to heaven, not, not with Koloya Elia, because that's a wrong song. The Koloya was there, but he was taken by a wind. Stop singing nonsense. <laughs> So Elijah went to heaven. The wind came to take him. It was time for presentation. Guys, God sent Elijah stay here into his mother's womb with a calling. That is what that, that's what happened to Jeremiah. Behold, I formed, before I formed your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you as, I sanctified you, ordained you as a prophet unto the nations. So if Jeremiah went to heaven, Gladwin, without present, presenting this thing of being a prophet to the nations, God would have dealt with him, right? Right? For starters, no, that's why you can't just live any way you want to live. And then have excuses. Yeah, you love us, okay, it's fine. He's our word. So this is Elijah. He's growing, he's growing. They don't tell us how he grew spiritually. He's a prophet of God. Then he threw his mantle, meaning that what's on my life portion, I put it on you, come, follow me. He picks it up and they walk. Right? Check now this. Then Elijah goes into eternity. Elijah must continue because you cannot ask a boy to continue. So he took a boy. Come, Jared, he, finish. He took a boy. In age... And calendar age, spiritual age. Don't miss this. What was on his life to complete can only be completed by a son. Not just a follower. So he gets a follower because he said, I will follow you, follower. But it is the teaching that takes you from following to sonship. Yeah, the anointing was on him. But maturity gives you the wisdom and the technology to know how to use the anointing. So here he had the call. Here the obedience was there. But he was not matured yet to walk in the same way double portion is his, his father. His father. So he takes him as a young man. Spiritually and naturally, and grooms him. So when he goes, there's peace in his heart because I've not only done what I'm supposed to, I've also left a pattern that can be followed in my physical absence. Then he goes to heaven. But the movement don't stop. Because sons are not after their own thing, they're after doing Jesus said, my will, my business is to do the will of the Father. Until Jesus could see himself multiplied in the other 12, he did not go to heaven. Just sit over here. Check this. Genesis 1.26, quickly. We're almost done. And I'm skipping a verse, but we'll get back to it. And God said, let us make men, mature son." In the image and likeness and blah, 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 let them have dominion. Um, we'll deal with this next week. I see we don't have a lot of time. Check this. So God gave them purpose to say, do this. Next verse, this thing is not moving. 26, 27. Yeah. Okay, 28, I mean, 28. And God blessed them. And said to them, this is Adam and Eve, God bless them. So what is the blessing? Now we know the blessing is what? Divine empowerment, not only to prosper, but to do what you've been called for. If you don't know what you've been called for, blessings will remain materially in your prayers. Come here quickly. The day God sent brother given to the ministry, Drim sent it as a cousin. 
This we're outside. Ask our wives. Once we call one another, we forget. We can speak for two hours. Ninety percent is Arsenal. Ask. But you know, my friend was like, "Why do you like? Don't you? They can't understand how we can talk about something that frustrates us so much for two hours, you know." But check. But in the context of me being a shepherd, we relate different, right? But without him understanding why God has put him in this ministry. Everything that he sees as a blessing will be just to empower and enrich his family. When you pray, Father, bless me, it must primarily be that you are a blessing to the kingdom. And he blessed them and said, be fruitful. Before the blessing, know your purpose. God first said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Let them have our image and likeness, meaning let them walk like us, let them speak like us, let them think like us. Think is very important. Then he said, let them have dominion. That's the purpose. Subdue the earth. That's the purpose. Everything that creeps and walk on the earth. That's why even when Satan came in the body of a snake, Adam had authority because God said, let them have even things that creeps on the face of the earth. Now it makes sense. Check. Then God said, now that I've given purpose, I give blessing. Right? Why? Not so that you can just shine, so that you can be a blessing. We, we miss it. We, we make provision like a blessing is not provision. God said, look at all these, look at the flowers, look at the birds. But now here's the thing. God said, and he blessed them. Now you can go and fulfill the subdue, the dominion. Thanks, yeah. I sit here. Check here. Come here, Jared. This is what Father and Son does. And he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. What is multiply? Bring forth after your kind more than you are. Jesus comes, calls the Volkbego gents. It's the betty com, kino com, it doesn't have to be 12. Right. Stan yele go saam in a bondel. Like die vrou Flink used to say, <laughs> straight bundle. So we're like, what? <laughs> so Jesus steps from heaven into his mother's womb, and now God said, you must go and start something. Can I study kindness because you can't miss this. You must go and start something. And when you leave, I must see more of you. He steps, he calls the disciples. He trains them. Come, guys. Trains them for three years. Frustrations here, congratulations here and stuff. When he turns around after three and a half years at the cross, when he goes and does his business, after 40 years he ascends. Right? Check this. And now, Diana? Niemann. Look so old, the boy. Check. When he goes to heaven, now there's 12. Guys, now there's 12. Guys, now there is 12. Now the enemy comes to scatter, thinking he's stopping the movement. But because Christ is in them, the hope of glory, wherever they go, they're bringing people to maturity. There goes Peter. Herod thinks he's stopping the movement. Pontius Pilate thinks they stop the movement. Scattering. Now he's going to multiply. She's multiplying. And when heaven sees, they just see Christ. 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 That is multiplication. That more of you, same quality. In the world, the more you dilute... The, 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 the weaker it becomes. No, in the kingdom, the stronger it becomes. So now we know, now we understand that ministers are not here to start churches. Because if you are not, if Christ is not in you, what are you multiplying? If you live as a rebel, you will multiply rebels. If you live as a son that cannot be taught, you will bring forth after your kind because the seed in you will determine the quality of the fruit. Stay where you planted and begin. Come a son. Then this one goes to Rome. Places that the 12 apostles couldn't go. 
Now the sun's coming. That's why Paul can write in jail, in jail. Tell Timothy to do this. Timothy become an evangelist. Timothy goes and preaches and he produces more. He produces more. So now what the enemy thought he's doing in your house by scattering is actually causing multiplication. So, now check. It says be fruitful and multiply. A true sign of any maturity is being able to produce. He walks with him. Elisha thinks He's just being obedient. He doesn't know that Elijah is multiplicating himself in him, duplicating his spiritual DNA in him. But whenever the secondary line comes, come here quickly, Pastor B. Brother Greg, come here quickly. When God blesses, check, this is how the spirit works. Stand here quickly, um, Jared. This is your grandfather. No, look that way. This is your grandfather. This is your father. This is you. Regardless how you and your father relate, that's immaterial. It's still a vessel God used to come to you. Your grandfather here struggles with lust. But he's got only one Yatsi. If it's not stopped, don't love this, is deeply serious. If it doesn't stop, because in Genesis 1.11, the seed is in it and it produces after its kind. It's a spiritual law. This seed is not just the semen. It is the spiritual DNA that goes in here. It's nothing Pastor Brian can do to stop it because it's a product of your father now has six nyatis. When it comes to you, unless the blood of Jesus comes and cuts that, he's multiplying after its kind. Year one nyati, year four, year six. What about your children? If you like, if your grandfather used to lie, his body suck, goes to the ground. The spirit jumps. He lies worse, worse, worse. Yo. <laughs> Even when he tells you it's morning, you must go out and see because <laughs> he dies. So now there's a double portion of demonology over him. Your father goes down. Here you are, stubborn, unrepentant. Deceiving, deception. What do you think happens here? Because the, 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 the principle of multiplication is not just for good. So Elijah throws his, 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 his mental. Because he asked, he said, my father, my father, when you go, meaning I recognize now that I've become a son of this man. Give me double portion. He gets up. I did nine major miracles as Elijah. I'm going to heaven to present not only my calling, but to say, I've also left something in the earth that looks like me, speaks like me. Only he's twice as powerful as me. Sure. Elisha came and he, what does he do? 18 major miracles. Nine times two is double portion. When it gets to the other sons, we don't even know what happens, but we know the generation that comes are guys like Daniel, are guys like Ezekiel, Jeremiah. What am I saying to you? You can only produce after your kind what you leave in the earth. But the multiplication can only be handled by sons. That's why Elisha here could say to Gehazi, open your eyes. And see, he said, no, Lord, open his spiritual eyes so that he may see those that are with us. It's more than those that are against. Only a son can speak that in crisis. A disciple will say, Vazi, here, we've been here, I've been praying for a job, my CV, whatever. A son says, Father, even if things look bad now, I know that you that are with me, heaven, are way more than those against me. Only a son can utter that. You want to change who you are, your speaking, your speech. Check what is being put in your heart. Thanks, Elisha. So now we understand that we need to become matured. We're laying the foundation because as we go into the series, there are stuff that you are withholding by your refusal to grow in the Lord. Still want to compromise, still want to do stuff that the world does because it makes you feel good. It's fine. It's your choice. Remember, Elijah didn't go. Heaven knew when Elijah was... <laughs> Let me not even say Elijah. Heaven knew when Elijah was ready to receive the double portion. And that's why 
Heaven came to get Elijah. Your readiness is not determined by you. What's on song? Last verse, Isaiah 9 verse 6. We'll get to the others next week. Say, Father, I want to grow. Check this. Who is born again here? Here, who's it? Hey, guys, you yeah, suppose of the say. <laughs> who's born again? Right. Have you ever seen a woman give birth to a fully grown man? <laughs> Rise which exactly? Check, check here. And they're speaking of Jesus. Even Jesus was not bo- born matured. For unto us a child is born, children are born, sons are given. So given if you are not a son, <laughs> check this. In the government, the government, what does this speak? Dominion. Let us make men and let them have dominion. That's why when God said in Genesis 1.26, let us have men, he was not speaking of a baby. So that when he's a son, that the government shall be upon his shoulder. When you're born again, you need to grow into to a place where you become a son. You can stay there. There's nothing wrong. You may still go to heaven. But you will not be trusted with certain decisions. Guys, come on. We pray at night, four o'clock, and we say, Father, close the drug dens. Wow. That's governance in the spirit. Why doesn't God do anything for us? Why is our families looking like this? And you must ask yourself, do I have government on my shoulders? If not, the problem is not God, it's your lack of growth. The cross was here, and I wish you didn't take it off. Jesus the baby. Jesus the fetus was so full of the Spirit of God. And I made that example that when he greeted John, blah, 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 he was full of the Holy Spirit. So here it is not saying that he was not God. He was fully God as a child. Yet they could not put Jesus on a cross. So when you make a sacrifice and you immature it, it's human sacrifice. When you make a sacrifice as a son, it's worship. Now to the worship team. If you're immature in your conduct, in your spiritual level, you're busy with human sacrifice. Only sons can go to the cross. Is everything about you still a baby? Imagine Jesus, son of God, hanging on a baby. No, no, no. That's why Jesus said, you don't, you're not taking my life. I'm giving it. Now we understand why I just stopped us from praising earlier. Children are told to do this. Sons know when to jump in. As a son, you know when to jump in. Children are forced, are manipulated. Okay, if you don't throw a tantrum, I'm going to buy you that car. And the child, yeah, he in the mall and he in the casmula, everybody. And people are looking at you like, can't you control your children? Your child is looking at you. You can't control me. You're looking at God. Why can't I control this? And everybody just looks immature there. Am I lying? We know you. Out of control. Why? Because a child is running the kingdom. Because it's a baby and babies always need a reward for every single thing. A son run without knowing, knowing a reward is coming. Whether I, whether, you don't create your own rewards. I must buy you a toy. It was not even in the budget so that you can just keep quiet. Now you're teaching that child, whenever I don't get my way, cry. Throw my cords out. Yeah, I won't go and play for the school. You don't want to buy me that cavella. Your mother don't even have money for you for Tommy Takis. But you're a child. You can't even see the situation in the house. Now you're forcing people. A son knows what it is, and a son starts working to get that plane together. Amen. Father, bring me to sonship. A child is born. Son is given. Let them have dominion. Our households sometimes look like that because we're babies. Churches sometimes look like that because we're babies. And the nice thing about being a son, God spoke once to Jesus that we know of. This is my son whom I'm well and truly pleased. The rest of it, Jesus knew what the father wants. 
a, a son don't need reassurance after every turn, Pastor Brian. Jesus knew, this is the heart of my father. He said, Father, this cup is bitter. Not my will, your will. So on some, maturity will tell us what it is that we need to do. Next week we'll deal with fruitfulness. When Jesus came to the tree, the fig tree, and he didn't find fruits, he didn't curse the tree so much that he didn't give forth fruits, he cursed him because of immaturity. You look mature, but the thing that you've been planted for is not here. So God is going to shake our trees, and it's going to be a good shaking if you really want to grow in God. Because I'm having the same processes happening to me. The exact same processes. In the book of Hebrews, we'll get to it. Paul writes, people are not sure who wrote the book of Hebrews, but Paul writes, and he said, I want to give you meat. Can I, I must stay on nestum with you. I must stay on lectogen with you. Why? Because if I give you food that your body is not ready for, I'll kill you. The meat will get stuck in your esophagus and you'll choke to death. Am I right, Sister Betty? Not because your child is hafrek, but because there's nothing in its technology that is able to grasp this. And maturity is not a thing of years. It's not. I've been safe for 40 years. When you look at the fruits, clean biscuits, fruit. You, <laughs> the only thing you can do with them, Tino, is take salt and masala and just mix it in mouth because this tree is useless. God wants fruit. If you're still moved by your gift and you are ma manipulating people because of your gift, you are not a son. Gifts are the leaves. Fruit shows us quality. You will know them by their preaching. No, you will know them by their singing. No, you will know them by the amount of tithe. No, by their fruits. You will know them. That's why if you're still immature and growing, we'll put water. And what is water? The Word of God. That's why it says washing by the water. <laughs> Put water, we put water, you grow. If you're willing, I always say this, if you're willing to learn, we'll teach you. But after five years of putting water and you're still at the same level, cannot be. And lastly, I said this always, when you see a peach tree, there is fruit. The first thing is, this is an abomination. The first thing actually is like the blood of Jesus. I rebuke this demon. It's not a demon, it's just... Immature trees don't bring forth fruit. When you look at your life, you don't see fruit. Don't rebuke the devil. Repent. Mm -hmm.